over to our next speaker, Max, being live with us and talking about CDKs. So having more than the AWS CDK and having more CDKs out there. So the stage is yours. All right, thanks. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, we'll jump right into the topic. CDK, uh, the future of Kubernetes application deployments, question mark, revisited. Uh, we'll clarify the, the title uh, in a few minutes. At first, let's have a look at the agenda. Uh, so I will give a short introduction about myself. So who's talking, then we'll clarify uh, what CDK is about. Um, then we'll have a look at what, what has happened since the last pretty much year, and we'll see uh, what's to come. All right, at first, a few words about myself. Uh, my name is Max. Uh, on the internet, you will find me under my nickname Brenner M most of the time. I'm a freelance DevOps engineer, uh, mainly focusing on Kubernetes and cloud infrastructure. Right now, that's AWS. Um, you can find uh, me coding on GitHub and as well as writing on my blog. Um, I also did a blog post um, pretty much like uh, roughly a year ago about uh, CDKs. And that's also one of the main reasons I'm pretty much here today. So I revisited it um, this year, um, pretty much for this talk. And yeah, next to that, I'm also um, riding motorcycles and bikes, as you may have guessed from my background. Um, and I do also some sports in my free time. Okay, let's jump into the actual topic. CDKs, what, what is it? Um, starting with a quote from the uh, website, so CDK is a web software development framework for defining Kubernetes applications and reusable ab abstractions using familiar programming languages and rich object-oriented APIs. Okay, uh, long sentence, what does it actually mean? Uh, so um, to, to explore that, let's, let's have a look at the evolution of um, writing Kubernetes manifests. So initially there was like plain YAML manifests. Um, if you've worked with Q Kubernetes, you pretty much know them. So that are just plain YAML files. Then um, customize came around, which um, yeah, extended the concept a little bit um, with override files and env environment files so that you were able to um, yeah, kind of template your, your um, manifests. Then one of the most popular tool around since a few years, Helm, uh, right now Helm 3, uh, which extended this concept a little bit even further. So now you have a real uh, templating engine, the Go templating engine. So you can use like programming constructs, like if, um, if else branches or conditionals or uh, loops. And yeah, now we are at CDKs, which brings the whole stuff to a pretty much next level. So you can use real programming languages, mostly object oriented, at least right now, uh, like Python, Java, and um, JavaScript or TypeScript and um, define your Kubernetes um, manifests with these. Okay, so um, having a look at where we come from, so that's pretty much like the plain YAML manifest that I was talking about. Um, in this example, it's a deployment. Um, you give it a you use a version, you give it a kind, you give it a name, you give it a replica count, in this case two. Um, you do the whole um, labeling magic, so the replica controller knows um, what, what pods it should take care about, and then you define your containers, giving it a name and an image. So how does this look in CDKs? Um, so in CDKs, everything starts with a chart. I will go over what's that in a minute. Then you give uh, define just a variable here. Um, it's a dictionary defining our label. By the way, that's Python code, as you may have guessed it already. Um, I will also show some, some other languages uh, in the next minutes. So yet again, we, will, we are deploying a deployment um, in this case, you can see the, the class that we are using here is coming from the KS namespace. So that's pretty much what, what um, CDK does, um, yeah, delivers us. Then we give our deployment a name. Yet again, a replica. We'll do the whole um, label management and we define a container. And then we define a so-called app. I will also go over this concept in a minute. We add our chart to it and then we execute the so-called synth. Synth stands for synthesize. So that's pretty much the function that takes our uh, Python code in this case and transfers it into uh, the manifest file, so YAML files. 
Okay, so going over the concepts of CDKs. At first, we have an app. Um, the app is pretty much just a container for multiple or a single chart. And it's the entry point for, for the synthesizing, just uh, the, the function call I just showed. Um, so there's also some configuration that you can do here. So for example, the output directory uh, where the synthesization will, um, yeah, will put the files in. That's something you can set here. Then there are charts. Um, don't confuse them with, with um, Helm charts. They're kind of similar, but also something else. Um, so there are a container for constructs. I will explain the term in, in a second. And what's what's pretty important about uh, a single chart will always result in a single Kubernetes manifest. So if you have like multiple resources that you want to aggregate into a single manifest, um, put them all in one chart and they will result in one file. Also, you can declare some global values here. So for example, in Kubernetes namespace, you want to put the resources in or certain labels. Okay, coming to constructs, if you're familiar with some of the other CDKs, you pretty much know this term already. Um, in the Kubernetes world, there are um, yeah, two, two levels of constructs. The le level one constructs are the, those being auto-generated and automatically de being delivered by Kubernetes. And then there are um, level two um, constructs, which are abstractions on top of um, level ones. What does that mean? Or what does that look like? Let's, let's have a look at an example. So we have a web service uh, construct here, by the way, that's TypeScript code. Um, the concepts are the same for all the programming languages. Um, I'm just trying to show a little bit of variance here. So we are inheriting the construct class. Um, we are do doing some construction constructor magic. Um, and then we are setting some variables here. Um, as you can see in the constructor, you, we passed an options object into the, the class or into the constructor. So um, we can pretty much choose the values from, from there, or if they are not defined, we can deploy the, declare some default values. So here we are defining the port, the container port, the label, the number of replicas, stuff like that. And then what, what you usually need for a web service on Kubernetes that you usually deploy is at least a service and the cube deployment. So that's what you need. And that's what we declare within this web service. So it's some kind of abstraction over a service and the deployment, and it will um, pretty much like remove all the boilerplate code that you would normally need. And you can reuse it for all of your web services. Okay, um, next part is the CLI. Um, installation is pretty simple. So the CLI is a node module that you can usually install like all the other tools with yarn or npm and then there are three sub commands first one is, is init so this one starts a new project here it's also the point where you decide for your programming language of choice then there's import this is for importing the um yeah level one uh, constructs for kubernetes or you can also import your crds um, so if you have custom resources that you use in your projects then you can create um classes that you can then use with your cdk cdk's code from those crds and the third command is the synth command already explained that that pretty much takes your code and converts it into yaml manifests so let's have a look at the overall workflow um pretty much like um yeah we are using the cli so it, it starts with the init command in this case we are we our programming language of choice is python so we execute cdk's init python app uh, which will then take care of everything. Then it prints a nice help message, which explains how to continue. Um, here you can pretty much see all the files that it's, that it's um, generating. This differs from um, programming language to programming language. Then we um, yeah, add our CDKs code. I will expect here that we um, add the deployment code from above, for example. Then we execute the synth code, which, which will result in a YAML manifest being generated. And then we can deploy this YAML manifest onto our Kubernetes cluster. That's how you usually do it. The other way is you can also tell the synth command to print to std out, and then you can pipe the output directly into kubectl apply. Yeah. Okay, now that we know what, what CDK is about, uh, let's have a look at what's new. Um, starting with Helm support. Um, yeah, at first, a little shout out to Matthew Bonick. Um, this has been an external contribution from him. So as far as I know, he's not part of the uh, CDK's 
team, but he uh, pretty much implemented the Helm support on his own. Um, thanks for that. I really like it. Um, I will also explain why in a second. So as usual, we will start with a with the chart. And now instead of generating or writing our own um, constructs here, we will use the Helm construct, which will then refer to a Helm chart. This can either be a Helm chart from a package directory uh, registry as you are used to it. So in this example, the, the Redis chart, and then you can pass values, work with it like with every other Helm chart. Or it can also be like a local Helm chart that you have in your disk. Uh, and what's really cool about um, the Helm support, which, which I really like, um, I think if you've worked with Helm before, then you met that point where you use the Helm chart from th some third party component, and then you, you figured out, okay, the configuration that you need to set in the Helm chart is not being supported by the chart. This is not going to happen to you for, with CDKs because you can access all the components within the chart um, programmatically, which you can see here. So you can filter a component by name or anything else and then change it the way you like. That's very cool. Um, there's a similar construct for plain YAML manifests. So if you don't have a Helm chart, but just plain old YAML manifest, there is the so-called include construct, which works exactly the same. Okay, talking about CDKs plus. Um, so yeah, that's a library called on, um, on top of CDKs. It comes with these high level objects and functions, which we already learned are called le level two constructs. And it aims to simplify day-to-day -day use cases. Um, and it also aligns with Kubernetes versions, which means um, it aims to support. So for example, there are CDKs for 1.17, 1.18, 1.20, and uh, all of them aims to support the functionality of this version, but they are also upwards compatible. So if you are using, for example, 1.17, you can still deploy them on 1.19 or whatever. Okay, little example as well again. We start with a chart again. Now we have a config map. Take care that this is not like the config map from CDKs, but it, that's the um, config map from CDKs plus. So it has more functionality. So in this case, we add a directory. So it adds uh, files from a local directory into the config map. Then uh, another CDKs plus construct volume. This that loads this config map and creates a volume off of it. Another CDKs plus construct of a deployment. Um, again, you can define your replica and then you can um, define the image, the command, stuff like that. Um, now another cool like intercooperation between these three components, you can mount the volume that we pre-created um, within the container. And then you can expo expose it using a service. Um, again, all of this could be handwritten, let's let's call it like that, with level one constructs, but we are taking CDKs plus here to simplify the process a lot. Okay, another term I already said, Java, Java support, so you can now use um, the Java programming language um, to define your Kubernetes manifests. Yeah, we'll just skim over the code. So it's a, it defines a service. You can see builder pattern, Java people will get excited when, you, when seeing this code. Um, but yeah, from from concept, it's it's everything. Uh, everything is the same. Okay, now in a few minutes, what's to come? So Go bindings, similar to Java, um, Go Go will be added support for. I had a little um, yeah interview call with Eli, one of the main developers, um, in preparation to this talk, and yeah, he told me about that. Unfortunately, there isn't too much information available right now, so I cannot really show anything, but that's pretty much like, for example, the um, init command that you can expect to work in, in a few months. And next big thing, 1.0 will be coming this year. Um, the main goal for now, at least what I've heard, there won't be any major features coming till then. Right now, it's uh, mainly about stability, so that the, the interfaces, the APIs um, will, will get stable, and also the CDKs plus API versioning already explained beforehand um, will be finished until then. And then there are some ideas coming up. So we'll just list them here. So it's about Helm chart generation, so you can take your CDKs code and generate Helm charts out of it. You can um, publish constructs as CRDs, meaning, for example, the web service I, I showed earlier, um, think of an operator running in your um, Kubernetes cluster that can take a YAML manifest um, based on this construct, so a web service custom resource, 
and um, create the the according deployment and service out of it. That would be really neat. And uh, from my perspective, the the coolest feature would be to um, be able to bundle your Docker images within the CDKs code. So there's a similar concept in AWS CDK where you package your application code and your infrastructure code together. That's also one idea that may be coming to CDKs. Um, but that's pretty much up to you. Um, CDKs has a community-driven uh, roadmap. So if you want to see any of those features, go to their roadmap and uh, add your vote, and they will act accordingly. All right, so that's the end of my talk. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. If there are still any open questions, feel free to contact me at um, the points on, on the screen. Um, two more things to say. Thanks for the orga. From, from my perspective, the, the CDK day has really been great um, since this point, so everything with the organization. And second and last point, uh, enjoy the rest of the talks. Okay, everyone, have a nice day and take care.